So today we got Chris Vogel here today. He is from Advent Health Shawnee Mission in Shawnee Mission, Kansas. He's going to talk to a little, us a little bit about what he does as a talent acquisition resource manager. Chris, welcome on. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, thanks for having me on and excited to talk about the glamorous world of recruiting here. So, <laughs> well, That's awesome. So we kind of talked a little bit before uh, recording, but we talked about what a recruiting manager does. Can you tell us uh, who you recruit for Advent Health? Yeah, so there's um, a few different um, pieces to my role. Um, you know, we have traditional recruiters who are going to, you know, speak their day-to-day -day roles are just talking to candidates and uh, presenting them to managers to get hired. Um, then we have another part of our team called sourcers that actually reach out and try to recruit people who are looking for jobs or maybe in another job. We actually try to pull them out and and get them to come and join our team. And then a third um, position is kind of a hybrid of both of those, which is my role um, in which I go out and I interact with the community, I interact with candidates, and I educate people about our jobs, but then also um, I'm a resource for candidates who are interested in joining our, joining our team and I can have conversations and help guide them in the right direction, so. That's interesting. So you would go to like a, a job fair then? Yeah, the, uh, definitely. So one aspect of that is going to job fairs. Um, I do presentations for candidates. So I interact with um, individuals that are in high school, college, um, you know, professionals who have 10 years experience. Um, and, and just really, again, it's, it's about educating people about our facilities and what we have to offer them. So um, what types of positions are you you actively recruiting for within the hospital? Sure. So, I I help out across the board on many things, but um, you know, big focus of mine from day to day are going to be um, our CNA roles, um, respiratory therapists, radiology technologists. Um, you know, we need a lot of help. Um, recruiting for our nutrition department as well. So a lot of the areas that really kind of are the um, big support functions of the hospital. Okay. So, so the, the, for the nutrition, you're talking like cooks and food deliveries or? Yep, exactly. Okay. So and then the, the nurses, what? So if you're if you're going into a uh, high school and you are talking to students, say, in, in these classes, like career or healthcare <laughs> careers, um, what types of kids do you typically look for or what sure. do you look for in a high school student? Yeah, I, that's a good question. I mean, for us, you know, we have certain minimum requirements that you have to hit. So you do have to be 18 for uh, pretty much all of our roles, except for two. Um, you do have to uh, have graduated with a high school diploma or a GED. So those are the minimum requirements we're looking for. And then, um, you know, outside of that, if you're looking for a, cl a clinical role, you need to have whatever required certifications. But soft skills, you know, we're, we want people that are excited about healthcare. Um, you know, they want to grow their careers there. And, you know, we want to be able to invest in them as much as they invest in us. So, Looking for students, again, that show passion for it, understand their why, uh, meaning, you know, why have they chosen to be a CNA or why have they chosen to go work um, in the nutrition department at the hospital? Um, being able to articulate those reasons and, and, and tell that story to a manager is really helpful in terms of the people we're looking for, so. Yeah, that's good. The why is always the, uh, one of the most For, for those two jobs that you don't have to be 18 for, say a kid that is, you know, a sophomore or junior that is thinking about going to get their CNA uh, through KCK with our CTE program that we have, um, would you recommend them looking for at one of those jobs just to get a feel for the hospital uh, and how it's run with different aspects? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's it's you have to be 16 so there is another requirement there um so you are 16 but it's it's a great it's a part-time role in which you're delivering food to our patients so right. you don't you're not necessarily getting clinical experience but you're 
you're still talking to patients, you're interacting with nurses, you're interacting with doctors, um, you're, you know, you're touring um, the hospital, you know, delivering these meals. And again, that's a vital aspect to uh, patient recovery and everything else there. So you really do get to kind of see what it's all about and and really make sure that, you know, when you get to that next step to move into a CNA role or a medical assistant role, it's really what you want to do because you've had that experience and you've built a great resume in the meantime. So I like that. So that's the, that's the one job that they can apply. Is there any other within the hospital? Unfortunately for anyone under 18, that's the, the only one. Um, and it's really great because it is a part-time and it can accommodate a student's schedule right. um, for the most part too. So there's some flexibility there as well. Good. Um, resume wise, say they're, you know, just out of high school getting their CNA um what what would you like to see resume wise with experience or volunteer or uh, anything else sure and you know i always emphasize this any experience is good experience and you know you don't have to have cna experience to do well in an interview or sell yourself you can have life experience so get what you have on there you know were you did you babysit? Were you, uh, you know, a lifeguard in the summertime? You know, maybe you worked at a retail shop. All those are great skills to highlight. I always just say, make sure that you, you put the stuff on your resume that will allow you to share those experiences when you interview. So, if you were a good customer service person, you know that skill is going to help you do well in a CNA role. So highlight those experiences, um, but definitely want to see that. Um, and, and, and again, it's, you know, we understand you're starting your career. So if it's not that long and robust, it's not that big of a deal. We just want to see what you've done. So. Um, and then within the hospital, I know that a lot of uh, friends that I've talked to have said that, you know, they started off as a, as a CNA and then the, company that they work for paid for their continuing education uh, to go get their RN or to go get other degrees. What does, do, what do you know about what Advent offers for that? Yeah, we, you know, we have one of the probably best uh, continuing education packages, um, not just in the city, but probably in the country right now. We have uh, $10,500 per year in tuition reimbursement, and it can be used towards advancing your career anywhere in healthcare. So, for instance, if you start in our nutrition department and you want to get your CNA or you want to maybe go to a uh, radiology technologist program, you can do that as long as it advances your career within the hospital. So there's a lot of different avenues you can take, um, but you do have to be a full-time employee for at least three months and you have to stay a full-time employee while you are going to school. So you do have to balance work, school, and your personal life during that time, but um, it's not easy, but it's definitely doable. So oh, 10, 10 grand free education is always always a way to figure out how to make that work. Yep. And, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people appreciate this. You're you're also gaining valuable experience while you're getting that education. So you're also building your career simultaneously. So when you graduate, um, you're you're going to have a leg up on your peers, too. Right. What other types of recruiting tools do you look for? say if you were trying to pull someone away from another another company to work for you guys. Yeah, so there's um, you know all sorts of online databases and just tools that we're going to use. So um, first and foremost, we have our internal database where we try to uh, utilize people who have applied in the past or worked for us. Um, we will go out and search Indeed. Um, we'll search LinkedIn uh, for for candidates. Um, so it's good to have a presence um, on those sites and, um, you know, and make sure that you've put out a professional demeanor there because, um, you know, unless you come and uh, see one of my presentations or seek us out, you know, you want to make sure that you um, are have a presence on some of those professional sites as well. So um, and what, what kind of growth are we seeing in the hospital? job-wise, um, CNAs, nurses, specialties, radiologists, sonograph, any, any types of uh, trending growth and development? Sure. Well, I can't, I can't really talk much about the growth, but I can tell you where like um, areas that 
we see um, a need and that are probably considered hot jobs. So a CNA is, is always going to be a role that's high volume. So there's always people who are coming into it, who've decided they don't want to work in CNA, who are advancing their careers. So we're always hiring there. Um, but some of the areas that there's just not enough people being trained that are going to be really great in the future. Respiratory therapists is a uh, is a position that is really um, in high need right now, and that was even before the pandemic hit. Um, medical lab scientists, a lot, a lot of people don't know about this role, but okay. it works within our lab, and they're the ones who are doing all the uh, diagnostic work behind the scenes, the analysis work on patient samples, things like that. Right. Um, that's a huge position that there are more people retiring than actually filling those roles on the front side. So, um, so really great role there. And then, you know, radiology technologists, um, you know, they're, uh, I think every hospital really struggles to fill those positions. And, um, and then most recently, uh, biomed engineers. So okay. um, you'll hear those talked about, but a biomed engineer in within our hospital is someone who's going to come in and do like um, maintenance work on our x-ray machines, or, um, you know, they're going to come in and do, you know, when we're having issues, they're troubleshooting those issues, working with the vendors, things like that. So it's right. kind of a combination of technology and um being a technologist and also understanding a lot of like electrical work too. So getting like an electrical, um, you know, foundation is really solid in that position too. So. Okay. That's, yeah, those are, those are just some interesting positions that, you know, most kids or young college age students wouldn't think of or hear about prior to, uh, to learning about them. Um, we're, you know, we're a small city, so if you can think of any kind of job that's that's done to keep a city going smoothly, we probably right. have that job within the the hospital as well. So, uh, how many how many people here locally at, at the Shawnee Mission um, location, do you guys think work within the buildings? Yeah, um, you know, last I heard, we have you know roughly 3,200 employees at Shawnee right. Mission, so it's good. It's a good sized hospital. Yeah, I mean the the size of it too it's like you said a small city we always talk as a, a school is a small city as well but you know we have 1200 people in the building versus a hospital with you know maybe up to 5,000 at any given point in time with patients and visitors and that kind of stuff yeah um, I've, I've heard uh on average could be anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 people on our campus on any given day so oh, wow. yeah which yeah. is which is crazy. <laughs> that is a lot to think about. Well, that's good. Um, anything else, rec recommendations you would have for high school or young college uh, students about uh, getting into the medical field? Sure. You know, I, I'd say get the experience when you can. So, um, you know, you'll have to, you know, if, if getting into healthcare is what your goal is, then take any job you can get, um, you know, and try to work your school schedule around the ability to take some of these jobs too. I know a lot of people get caught up in the fact that they want to go to college and then come back and work. But if your end goal is to work in healthcare, you know, do what you can to get, you know, a shift a week or two shifts a week and, and start getting that experience because touching patients and getting those soft skills, you're not going to learn those um, at school and you're going to gain that you know, by doing what you can within the hospital walls. So, right. Um, so let's talk about your role a little bit more too. Then, how how did you get into being a medical rep? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, well, it started it started a long time ago. Um, I went to school um, to. Uh, someday work in advertising. I graduated with a journalism degree and I worked in that field for a couple years and just realized it wasn't actually enjoyable for me. So um, I got started working in recruiting and um, did that on the agency side for 10 years. Okay. And um, then just as my career progressed, I realized that I wanted to try to work on the corporate side. And, um, and so I just you know, really was a matter of networking and, and seeing right. this opportunity. And, um, and this was a new role that really came to the, um, came to light within, um, medical recruiting. So, um, community sourcing is kind of the position I'm, I'm taking and, you know, I, it allowed me to take skills from my 
my history as well as, you know, gain some of that corporate experience as well. So um, a lot of my, a lot of my reason for being here is because I figured out what I didn't want to do first. So I kind of went down that exact same path as well with, uh, I did marketing, sports marketing as an undergrad, um, and then went back to school to be a, a teacher and a coach, which is something that I've loved and, and found, um, so much joy and just like you talked about the why um you know helping kids figure out what they want to do with their life getting in involved in the medical field um is something that's pretty cool uh what's something you wish you knew in high school or college other than don't go into journalism uh, <laughs> that you think might have helped you advance your career you know, I think I've touched on it a few times, but it's it would be really kind of getting that work experience um, in a um, in a more deliberate sense. And, you know, I I always had jobs, but it was more just a job because it was supporting me going to school and things like that. Versus like really seeking out a job and gaining that experience in what I wanted to do. So, you know, if your students know they want to go into healthcare. They already have a leg up on where I was at because they've they think they want to go into healthcare. Well, you know, as I said, going to be a phlebotomist or a CNA and, and getting those shifts and learning that as soon as possible. It's just I think you'll figure things out a lot quicker. So, um, and then just a, a fun question is uh, for people that are interested in going into healthcare. What is a, if you don't like from what you've heard and seen being around the hospital, what is a, if you don't like this, then don't go into healthcare? Ah, uh, you know, um, that's the funny part is you, there's a job for everyone. You know, I, I could not handle seeing the blood and guts. Um, so, um, you know, I, I don't think I could do well touching a patient and being on that side of things, but I still get to feel some of that, um, you know. I get to feel the the positive outcomes from that by helping provide people who do that. So, right. you know, if, if you don't want to do that, there's there's something else you can do. You can do business. You can do marketing. You can be a doctor or nurse. So, you know, again, there's you know there's all sorts of different things you can do to get involved in healthcare. It doesn't have to just be, um, you know, clinical in nature either. So, cool. Um, and then, do you have a book that you would recommend for high school young college kid to read? Uh, it could be anything out there about, you know, something that you've enjoyed. Something that I've enjoyed. Um, you know, it's it's funny, a, a book that really stands out to me that I've, in the last 10 years that I've read that I thought was my favorite book was actually a, a bio, biography about um, Andre Agassi uh, okay. called Open. Um it was just a great story, and um, you know, he talks. You get to read a lot about his perseverance and what it takes to be successful, and I think that applies to, um, you know, a lot of you know people just to, just to see how much grinding it takes to get to where he was. Um, and it's just he's also kind of a the rock star of tennis too, so it was right. a good story. So, Absolutely. yeah, that, that's a good one. I'm gonna put that one down for me. Um, and then, what are some benefits for working for Admin Health? You know, like. Uh, as a PE teacher and a swim teacher uh, and the golf coach, I get to people think I play games all day with the kids as a PE teacher <laughs> or I swim all day or whatever it is. What's a, what are some benefits that Advent Health provides for not, not only the nurses or the CNAs, but some of the office type people also? Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's a good company like, you you really get to feel like you are making a difference um, in the in the work that you're doing, which I never valued as much until I started doing that and realizing, oh, there is there's some impactful work that I'm doing. So I think that's you know kind of intrinsic. But in terms of just you know benefits, for instance, um, you know we get a flu shot every year, and you know you just you go get that. And I, I know that seems silly, but it's just they're like things that I never thought about my own personal health until I was around a healthcare company, um, our continuing education, uh, professional development, uh, they paid for me to, uh, get my, uh, SHRM certificate this year, which is just a, you know, professional recognition of working within, uh, HR. And, and that's something I never would have done had, 
had the company not paid for it. So, um, so again, just personal advancement. And, and the great thing is, is if you want to do something within the organization and, and you have the drive to do it, someone will support you and figure out how to make it work for you. So I really like that a lot. Well, I'm going to let you go and not take up too much more of your afternoon today. Um, thank you again for coming on. We really appreciate you coming in and talking to the kids. Had this been a, a, a normal school setting, uh, school year, you know, we, we generally have guest speakers come in and talk. Um, and la last question I guess I have is, or want to talk about is setting up um, our career day that we were going to do last year. Yep. Uh, so for future students, can you kind of ex describe what a career day when we bring them in would look like? Yeah, it was a really cool event um, that we're hoping to expand on, but it we really we just invited um, a class to come and they got to speak with our nurse um, management. So some of our nurse leadership and hear about their careers. Um, we toured the hospital, um, more general tour. We, we can't show too much of the, the clinical side of things, right. um, but we also got to get the students into our sim lab and see where um, a lot of our nurses and doctors do some of their training and training scenarios, which is always fun to see some of the, the medical dummies and things like that as well. So, yeah, so we're hoping to, you know, continue that next year, um, fall of 2021. Well, we look forward to seeing you then, and thanks again for being a part of this. Yeah, thank you, Drew. It was exciting to uh, to to do this, and um, I hope it was valuable for some of your students. So.